I mean, now it's also like an influencer is a social media based thing, but then it was like an influencer was actually influential in mm. their community. Mm. And I, and that's like my Kanye reference is like people are always like saying, you know, influencers live on social media. I'm like, well, Kanye doesn't have an Instagram. He's the most influential guy on the planet. We are back for a very special episode 11. We're over in Paris. Me, myself, George from The Soul Supplier, Alex Vass, and the man has probably got the coolest and best job in footwear, John Wexler. Thank you for having me. Nice to meet you. First of all, welcome. How can we address you? Do you want to be called John? John Wexler? Wex? Whatever you prefer. Have all you got like, uh, yeah, another I'm, nickname that you want us to call us? Uh, no, no, no. I'm all goody. Yeah, this uh, is a good point because you're Wex on your socials, That, that right? works too. Yeah, I mean, people have called me that my whole life. Um, John is my first name. Whatever you prefer. Okay. It's so I'm weird all, because people have been calling me stuff my whole life, but I, that's not the stuff I want to be called. There you go. So there you we, go. We, we go exactly. with Wex. I've been we'll called worse. I'll, I'll go with Wex. There you go. We can go with Wex. There you go. So, just on that, what do people call you around the office, around Adidas? Uh, they call Big me Wex. They call me Wex, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, that nickname, because you can never call me by my last name, Sully. Sullivan. Isn't Sully the big dinosaur thing from yeah, Monsters, just, Inc.? It just doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, does nice. It? Sully? Not, not um, Sully. I think there's a ring to that. You, Thanks, I man. think you could sell that. It's making me feel good. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. Sully. I go with that. At Sully. I like yeah. it. There you go. Um, that's a good Instagram handle as well, Wex Solid. Thanks. Um, yeah. We're here at the home of classics. We are. Yeah. It's a big event. It's an amazing it's a huge space. Event. There it's is a awesome. lot going on. A lot going on. They, they had a lot going on last week to kind of prepare for it. Yeah. Brought in creators from all over Paris to uh, celebrate alongside of our, you know, iconic archive and mm. the products around us in this room, you know, from the Home of Classics collection and kind of creating memories. And you saw them probably on display as you walked in. Yeah. Uh, just you amazing. You through the row of classics, right? Yeah. That are on display. And now today you come in and you, you walk through the space. Your liaison gives you a key to one of the lockers. You get to exchange your shoes. I haven't done that yet. The, Oh, Have you, you got to do it. I think yeah. they made, I think these shoes behind me, they brought in special for you guys. Yeah, we got we got special packages. We, yeah. haven't, we haven't told yeah. anyone about those yet. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, because we got yeah. a key as well. You nice, got, nice. Do, like, we don't know what, what happens with this key yet. So... I guess I'll Are spoil, you spoil it. it? I could spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. alert. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like spoiler, um, but not spoiler. Okay. Yeah, because I don't know what's behind the in the box that your key is for. However, yeah. um, so you take that key, you go into the, the room with all the lockers, you open up the locker that your key works with, okay. and you get one of the shoes from the collection to wear through the space and create new memories, um, badges of honor, if you will, nice. on the shoes. Because, you know, the whole idea behind the Home of Classics is Adidas archive is unrivaled. Yeah. And so there's a, a, a selection of products that are, are archive, like icons, Superstar 80s, Stan Smith, uh, Rivalry, et cetera. Uh, Continental 80 is in there. And then there's new products that are sort of born from those elements of our iconic products of the archive as well, like Supercord, SC Premier, SC, uh, Supercord RX. I found it quite weird that the Continental 80s was actually in the selection because it used to be called the Rascal, right? Correct. Yeah, so... I was telling people that in the hall. See, I knew you guys had your, your sneaker knowledge on <laughs> Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, the Rascal. For, He's done his research. He's it was when, called when the Rascal. When it first dropped, uh, people were looking at it going, like, oh, there's this great new silhouette and I mean, a few of us were looking at it going, that looks a lot like the Rascal. It's the Rascal, yeah. yeah it was the follow to the power face. Yeah, yes. so... Um, and I've seen some really cool people do stuff with the, the Continental 80s. I've seen people kind of pick away at the, the, the pinch... Is it like a pinstripe across? Can we it call is, it yes. That's what I would call yeah, it. Yeah, so and people have picked the way it and kind of made it blank and it looks really really nice like that yeah well. you see that negative space in there yeah. you know Donald Glover's uh, collection included a, a Continental 80 and it had that raw edge to it mm -hmm. unrefined uh, deconstructed absolutely there's a lot that you can do with the products from the archive because they're you know they were designed from such an honest place yep. that they're, they're just pure it's just pure design language. You look at Stan Smith and, and what it's meant to our brand but also how many other brands have created their their, their own archives, yeah, yeah. But off that shoe. Yeah, you yeah. You know, using yeah, that yeah, as the inspiration. So it's like a lot of people see our archive as their archive because they grew up with it as well. Yeah. Um, and it inspires a lot, people, the, a lot of other brands, yeah. A lot of people that we've had on the podcast, um, well, I say a lot, there's there's quite a few that have named the Adidas archive as like our a, brands. A bucket list kind of thing. A bucket oh, yeah. list archive. And that's what we've the, heard. And that is from Morgan as well, who we spoke to. Oh, Morgan's great. Yeah. He, when, he names that as... I can't lie. Me, me, no, and Mo me and Morgan did it. We did it last year. We went you to the did archive. It, yeah. Did you? See, so, so we, uh, what was your favorite shoe in the archive? Uh, so, you we, went, the we, spot there. we actually went at the time. Um, the Never Made Pack was being dropped. Oh, great. So, we kind of based our entire visit around the Never Made Pack yeah. and kind of like, you know, the old Boston and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So, we kind of had our access limited, if you like. Um, 
But I had a cheeky wander around, and it was some of the memorabilia stuff that's in there. You know, David Beckham's got signed uh, Adidas Predators in there. There's the robe that Muhammad Ali wore. Yeah. Uh, did, they show like you, there, yeah. did they show you the Muhammad Ali boxing boot with the yeah, handwritten note yeah, so from Ali it. to Adi Dassler? Yeah, oh, so really? that's, that's we like saw the boot. That was a it. A tearjerker. Mo- that's like if you love sneakers, you see that. Yeah, you're reduced yeah. to a child. The conditioning it's it's of it. shocking how powerful that is. It's so mad because you go in there and the actual room is kept at like an optimum temperature. Like, yeah, to store the goods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, so, yeah. So it's a real experience. You know, the, stuff, stuff goes bad over time. It's stuff yellows, especially stuff that's yeah, white. Yeah, it looks what beautiful you, though, right? You when think? it like ages like that. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, it just, to me, that's like the sort of the history coming out in the product itself. That shows you, you know? that it's an archive. I mean, when it's like yeah. not a, you know, a flaw, <laughs> you know, yeah, but it's yeah, like yeah. through time, I think that that is a, um, a you know, it's like fine story, wine. isn't it? You know, it just it gets better with age sometimes. And other times things don't age well, but, um, you know, I don't know if you'll find those in our archive. Like just we, people like us. Well, I mean, don't like, age I well. I don't, I don't, <laughs> trust me, I'm in, the, in that circle. Um, but yeah, the archive is, is amazing. And so to, to have that it, ability to walk in there and sort of throw a rock in any direction and see something amazingly beautiful when you when you look behind that I mean it's it's a real luxury working here for yeah, sure Wex, to be a part of it what makes a classic oh you stole my question how did you uh, do that just, you what makes a classic because that's a big word right I think that's a that's a, a recipe that is kind of defined by the person who is looking at it themselves but um, for me a classic is, is simple pure honest designed for an end use and, and what the athlete needs and nothing more uh, once you start to over overbuild and, and add embellishments to it that are that are simply unnecessary. And that's why I feel like the house the home of classics is such a beautiful representation of what that means. Yeah. Because it's it's old and new. Um, it's the the superstar eighties. I mean the most iconic superstar, the superstar that Run DMC was singing about when they said my Adidas, like it doesn't get more iconic than that. Yeah. So it's not necessarily based on the popularity, but it it kind of uh, I don't think it's based on popularity as much as the meaningfulness to a to a community. Yeah, how so iconic. So, like, it the is. thing is, though, is that once things become meaningful to a to a to a certain group, if those people are in a style leading position, it's other people are going to follow. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I live in America. McDonald's sells the most hamburgers. I haven't eaten McDonald's in ten years. That's just not for me. But I'm sure there's people in America who think it's classic because mm. it sells the most. Mm, mm. For me, it's more about um, you know that feeling you get. Yeah, I hear that. When you eat yeah. the hamburger. <laughs> I get I wouldn't that. Know. I get that. I wouldn't know. It's usually a, not I mean, a great I, feeling after. I don't know how. Not hating on McDonald's, by <laughs> Yeah, but how, just how traveling me. so much have you, have you not eaten a McDonald's? Because they're yeah. at every airport. Yeah. At every airport. Yeah. How is that possible? What's your secret? Tell people. Uh, Willpower, so man. Yeah. I, Willpower. Yo, I <laughs> yo. don't. Uh, I try to eat as, as seldomly as possible when I travel. Flights, you really? airports, yeah. the whole thing. Because I'm one it's of those a danger people. zone, isn't it? Yo, the second I walk in a shopping mall or an airport, I immediately want to eat at every single thing. And so That's if I if I, if I yeah. succumb to that. Yes, yeah, I actually do do that. Yeah. I just eat everywhere. So hey. you just built a rule. But I've bless, eaten my way bless. through Paris. I, you know, at a certain age, I had to build a rule. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. yeah. I was just in the US. I was just in LA and uh, Las Vegas. And the food over there, you guys have it good in the US. Where'd you go? Um, well, I was in Hollywood for a bit, but there's just a better health scene out there. Okay, okay. For good food. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, London's just about getting it now. Oh, okay. But LA is pretty good for that. Yeah, You're on your green yeah, juices every day, right? <laughs> yeah, on your green juices every day, on your eight acai bowls. You know, is it that sort of is stuff. Is, 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 I don't know. Is he, is he trolling me right now? No, 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 no. This is he, he's, he's Okay, like, we're just getting to know each other. I'm just he, making sure. Like, he's so, like changing a lot. So what I was saying, I live in Portland, Oregon, but I spend more time in LA and, yeah. and definitely if you have dietary restrictions or whatever yeah, yeah. but Europe has caught up I mean we go to Germany quite often for work hmm. here uh, Italy whatever you know I think that you see it more and more like if, if you have certain diet restrictions whatever um, but you know maintaining a healthy lifestyle and working a sports brand you have you know expectations around that and yeah. like we have gyms in all of our buildings and the headquarters and yeah, yeah. you're expected to use them I yeah. mean there's there's workout teams like like flow off camera right now with Team Worst Behavior out of Berlin. Shout out Flow. Shout out Flow. Shout out Flow. Yeah, yeah shout and, out Flow. Shout out, shout out Flow. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of expected. And um, in our cafeterias, there's nothing but the healthiest options. Mm. 
And, you know, also within the brand, we've taken the whole like parlay partnership to heart and there's no plastic in our offices or in our stores. And, um, and now you see cities around the world get, I mean, New York just banned plastic shopping bags yesterday. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think we formed a partnership with parlay in 2014, 15. Mm. I can't remember. I, it's, it's been evolving through time, but, uh, no, Eric went to the UN in 2015, I think, and spoke about parlay. Yeah, we heard Eric speak in uh, the Future Graph Loop event. It was amazing. Yeah, he was. It was yeah. I was. I said I, I walked out of there m- the most inspired I've been in five years in this industry running this He's business. He's the leader, man. I, but Willow Smith as well. Yes, yeah. She was Willow. so good. Well, Because well, we, it's well, authentic. Um, yeah, she authentic really as, lives that. Yeah. And so that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, she stood you, on stage and you, everyone was like... Isn't that amazing? When yeah. it's authentic, it's easy. Because it, everything comes from your heart. It's honest. It's true. And mm. when, when you're full of shit... Yeah, that People was it. it. There was conviction in her voice. Yeah. And what she said about plastic, I didn't know some of it. And I was like, wow, I really it's, need to be more conscious. Yeah. Well, and I'm usually quite careless in that sense. Well, Jaden oh, and no, Will started that water yeah. brand, didn't they? Jaden, Jaden Smith and Will Smith started the that was like yeah, water, so that water was, brand. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just water? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And absolutely. That's like a, that, no well, use of plastics in, or in, something like that. But I, that, 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 I can't remember the internet. Amazing. That Future Graph Loop concept and making shoes 100% recyclable was not... I didn't know that was what was what that event was about, and so when and you went there, you didn't know I, that was, was what it was going to be. I was not fully aware of because awesome. we were told minimal, right? That's awesome. We were kept in the dark, and it worked. Well, I worked at the company, and I also only heard about it about a month in advance because you know with those technologies, so you only heard it's about really it one about month. keeping it. Su- I mean, the the part of the company that creates those technologies works five to ten years in the future. Yeah, it's our futures team and advanced creation team. So. Mm. Um, until a couple of years ago, my badge didn't even get me on their floor in the building because it's like Jeez. the recipe for Coca-Cola. Yeah. You know, there's like six people on earth who know it or something and they keep it in a safe. Not that I've had Coke in 10 years either, you know? You sound but, pretty health conscious. Yeah, yourself. man, you'd be surprised how unhealthy I am for a guy who has a diet as clean as mine. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> just no McDonald's and Coke. Just no McDonald's and Coke. Everything either. else bad. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, but Eric is a phenomenal, uh, insightful guy and, and I, all the stuff we're doing in that parlay space was born from him and his mm. beliefs and how he brought that in. And then, you know, you take that to future craft loop where you're, you're designing things in order to recycle them in order to rebuild them into that thing. Yeah. I mean, that's the end to end cycle right there. If we can do that, landfills reduce yeah. those plastics spots in the ocean, reduce like all that stuff. It's an ecosystem. We're I mean, all yeah. part of it. I think the consumer was just, there were a lot of consumers on our channels that were just, they, they bought into it straight away. The, the skeptics bought into it because they were like, Adidas is actually going to make less money by doing this, but they're, they're conscious for the future. Well, they made the commitment, you know, like, right? There's the, the commitment it, that yep. you're going to be, is it, I don't know, is it 100% or, or 80%? Com, uh, 100%. So is it 100% sustainable? Yeah, by, by like the 20, uh, Future no. Clef Loop? No, no, just the, the commitment that you guys made oh, to become oh, a, yeah, a sustainable yeah, yeah. Co- company. Yes, I the data is escaping me. Sorry, yeah. like I think, travel I think brain. It, no, yeah, yeah. I think it was like something like twenty twenty five or twenty thirty. I thought it was twenty four, like but yeah, I thought, but yeah, something around there. It's a, it's an incredible um, north star to have as a brand. And, it really is. Yeah. Um, you know, when Eric made those bold statements at the UN about what we were going to do through the Parley partnership, it it really shook up the industry. And um, you know, when you take bold risks like that and you stand behind them and you deliver on them, mm. people want to be a part of that. Mm. What I really liked about the parlay partnership was the rollout of the, the football kits. So, like, you know, you had the Real Madrid shirt and a lot of it was made from recyclable bottles, wasn't it? And that kind of, I think, really took a stand with a lot of the consumers because they were like, well, this is, you're reusing product to now put out, like, a football shirt. Now, mm. you know, from a European perspective, that is huge. Real Madrid, the biggest football club in the world. Um, Shows so, that the stuff works, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that, that was it. I mean, yeah, on, on-field validation goes a long way mm. and um you know it's funny you were talking earlier about like the f- or, or like we, you know we're talking about like home of classics or whatever and I, I definitely believe that that first poly issue will be a future classic it's like 20 years time from now in that home of classics yeah, yeah. or whatever that manifestation of our archive becomes those products would be in it you know mm-hmm. that's why the shoes in this room are in this collection because at that point in time they were you know super it was built for basketball Pivot Zone, Shelto, Willem Bonger, Tennis, Drag Your Foot, that same mentality. And um, those shoes were created to, to provide a solution for a problem, much like this parlay. For, and now here we are today with like opening up the archive because of the people that 
you know, believed in those things back then. Mm. So it's it's this constant stage of creating so it's your a future, future icons, yeah. you know? It's yeah. interesting because I was just going to literally touch on how it is uh, as a group that you guys kind of settled on the... the ni- is it nine shoes or ten shoes? It's ten shoes. Yeah, so how is it you kind of settled on those ten shoes? Because surely there must have been, like, insane debate back and forth within I, the office. Like, oh, I don't think this makes the cut or these stars. I'm not, like, I'm how not do you lie. define that? I'm not going to lie. I am so glad I was not in that room for that discussion. Because I can only imagine the passionate debate that went into that. Yeah, who but, was? But in I was the room. not in that room. That's I'm, I'm not in the product creation team. I, our team's role yeah. is once these concepts are created, yeah. our job is to find the right people to seed them to, mm. or to bring in to help amplify them, or be a part of a campaign around them. Yeah. So let's um, let's go into that then, because I wanted to talk to you about your job. Okay. Um, the most coveted job in footwear. Yeah, because okay. it's a big title, right? Global VP Fasty of Entertainment. Okay. And influencer marketing. Right. So for anyone that's listening or watching, what's a day like in that position? Um, Every day is kind of unique and different because of the fluid nature of the industry itself. So you might have a plan for that week, but then there might be something that, you know, one of these partners that we have will call and and hit you up and say, I had this idea. Mm. And then depending on the urgency of that idea or the urgency of the date that it's coming for, Mm. you have to rally or not. So typical day for me, is I'll try to, to get in touch. Actually, I, I call Flo on my ride to work because he's based in Europe, so I give him a shout if I'm in the office in Portland, um, which is maybe one or two days a week, and then the other days a week, unfortunately, I'm traveling. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's great once you get there, but you know, the, the actual traveling missing part, your yeah. family yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, is tough. That's traveling to, to see your partners or traveling to other locations for Adidas? Yeah, it's LA, it's our LA office, or um, yep. you know, LA, it's basically the key cities around the world, LA, New yep. York, Paris, London, Berlin. Hmm. I mean, I haven't been to Berlin in a minute. I'll be there in June. Um, he missed out London, but it's okay. We were there yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't I say London in that run? I thought it was the second city I said. Um, so it's LA, London, Berlin. Yeah. London was we in got there. it. We you covered missed it. You missed we're it. There. <laughs> so, um, and I, only, I know I say in that order because LA and London were our first two offices. Yeah. So for about seven years of my career within this department, or eight years, mm. six years, uh, those are the only two locations where we had entertainment and influencer hubs. Then we opened our office in Berlin when Flo opened that office. And then uh, we recently opened up in Paris, New York, Shanghai, Tokyo, um, Moscow. And the the role of those teams, uh, we just brought them on last year in November. So I have yet to get to that office. I I can't wait to check it out. Um, But, you know, the the team there will will, will say, okay, I know these guys in the community that would really resonate with these products really resonate with them Hmm. we place orders we see these products in advance of the season place orders against them so that we can seed you know that's why you asked me like how are these picked there's definitely shoes that i would have died on the hill for to put in here only because they're personal to me though like i think that these are sort of a fair representation of like what that archive can stand for and you know when you talk about like white leather Foot, you know, like basketball. So, what was that part of the criteria tennis. that they had to have, you know, be a white leather shoe? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. It, that was part of the criteria. Yes, absolutely. Right? We were trying to uh, pull things out that were as iconic and, and um, relatable as possible to, to what the stories that we told then and the stories that we want to tell for tomorrow. And seeing the trends that are happening in the marketplace and, and trying to anticipate where they're going, this is the. Um, way that we are approaching the marketplace, you know, and, and uh, you know, you referenced the rascal earlier, you know, the, the naming of Continental 80s to actually put a, a sign around the fact that that was the era it came from, that kind of a thing. So trying to make it as relatable as we can along the way. Cool. But yeah. So, I mean, so yeah, so we seed this stuff kind of, go, I, sorry, I kind of, no, cool. I, I traveled a lot in the last three days and I'm a little scattered. I apologize. So we will have you here. No, no, I appreciate you guys. So we will see these products to, you know, celebrities and influencers, uh-huh. um, people from communities. Who are, and when I say influencers, I just want to qualify that. Yeah. We want to give shoes to people who are actually influential, yeah. not people who have influencers, their job title, uh-huh. which didn't exist. Oh, man, we, I, kn- I knew that's why I didn't get there, man. Well, you, <laughs> no, you, guys, well, you guys are media in our world, <laughs> yeah. so we wouldn't even service you guys. But yeah. um, okay. no, no offense. Next no offense. No, 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 I'm no. not taking shots. It's just not who we... No, our, our we're not even is, in your lane. Our lane is clear. Eyesight, man. Our lane is super clear. <laughs> right. So um, I mean, I've so, heard that you speak quite cut and dried like that. So it's like, we won't service you guys. That's cool. It's just not our role. Yeah. I keep that clean. Because it's someone else's role. And the reality is that a, 
at any organization, you want to respect other people's roles because that's mm. how you flourish. There's a, 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 a coach in America named Bill Belichick who says, when uh, you're doing yeah, someone yeah. else's role, no one's doing yours. And I truly live by that. Not that I like Bill Belichick at all. I'm a Bears fan. So. And <laughs> you can like the Patriots NFL. coach, right? He was, yeah. yeah, yeah or yeah. he is. Um, so anyway, uh, so yeah, we will gift out these shoes or bring in people yep. to the office, forge relationships with them. Um, the team will also identify uh, people of, Im- of influence within local markets who will then emerge into these sort of larger trend yeah, so leaders. Whilst the, uh, and we yeah. will then, at that point, work with them on potentially a collaboration in the form of content or bring them in close to the brand. You know, kind of like the ready-made event, you, you or the never-made never made never made, event yeah. that you were at in, in Herzl where we kind of pulled back the curtain, I imagine. Yeah. And, you know, you did see parts of the archive and you were probably in the Maker Lab, I assume. Yep. So yeah, yeah, I made, a, like I made a nice little shoe for my daughter. There lovely. you go, there you go. Nice, you got a daughter? Yeah, I got, yeah. I got was, two um, kids. Is that important then, Wex? At the, get them before they're too big? You know, get the influencer bef- when so they're sort of on the on the when they're a the, micro influencer. Yeah. The, the insight that we founded the department on, the team's like central insight was: we want to work with people who are on the cusp of going from niche to mainstream. Yeah. So if if people were already too big, meaning too commercial or mainstream, mm-hmm. they were not the people that we wanted to um, roll with because the 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 reality is is that people want to. There's a certain element of sneaker culture that's based around rebelliousness. They want to be part of something that's that's, sort of different. That they've discovered and that they're on the come up with versus things that are already there. And it's like, like, you know, people complain about music on the radio because it's like pop music. And I'm like, well, if you close your eyes and listen to it, do you still hate it? Or do you hate it because you know that artist is huge? You know, and so for me, it's like... Yeah, that's a big part of it. So I, so I, don't, I don't hate on mainstream shit personally, but um, our team focuses on people who are on the cusp from going from niche to mainstream, yeah. which is how the first TV ad that um, we ever worked on when I was in Originals doing communications work, uh, when I was global comms manager for Originals from like 2008 to 2010, uh, it was a, a, a musician named Katy Perry's first... TV spot. And oh, it was, that's, that's it was small before she yeah, was yeah, yeah. Katy Perry. It was when she was a young, aspiring artist who had just put out a song called "I Kiss the Girl," and hadn't even made a video for a song called "Hot and Cold" yet. So, like, um, and actually, a better example of that, who's more local to, to you guys' market, is you're familiar with Dynamo. Yeah, the magician. Dynamo, yeah, the magician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first campaign I ever worked on at Adidas, uh, that same campaign that Katy was in, Dynamo was in, and this was in 2008 or nine, and now he's like the. You know, one of the biggest guys on Sky yeah, Network huge. ever, yeah. and you know, still the same genuine, Is authentically amazing guy. Well? Uh, I I know him from my connection to him here. Gary okay, Aspen cool. and Tom Ramson Got introduced it, yeah. me to him in 2008. Shout out Gary Aspen as well. Yeah, man. Got to shout guy. out Gary top, Aspen. Top, top yeah. Got to. And um, he's a, he's the man. And uh, yeah, so Dynamo, we've he's been Dynamo and Dan have been. Like we stayed in contact throughout since nice. that moment because the reality is is that once you bring people into the family, like. That's family, you know? So on that family subject, you mentioned that you have two kids. Yeah. Now, you're quite known, whether you know it or not, for sending Instagram into an absolute frenzy when you like to post a picture of your wardrobe or your, you know, or your, your shoe collection. Oh, wow. Your Yeezy Thanks, collection. Um, I've seen it get reposted thousands of times. Um, oh, shit. Whenever your picture goes up, surely your kids must be on your back all the time. Like, dad, I need these Yeezys. Dad, I need this. Dad, I need that. Like, because... I mean, you, they must nah. have access to, like... It's, do yeah, they have yeah, unlimited yeah. Yeezys? So we're very clear about who's in our lane. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so the kids my, don't make it, man. I'm just joking. Or maybe just my, one of them does. My, my 16-year-old has very little interest in uh, anything outside of... Like the shirt I'm wearing, my kid... I, sh- I sent a picture of this to my kid, and and they said... My, my 16-year-old, they them pronouns, uh, said, oh, that's a Gildian Finch. Like on site, knew the bird. That's what they're into. My 14 year old is very aware of sneakers <laughs> and very aware of, of Yeezys. And so, you know, there's, there's an occasional um, purchase that I'll make for, for her. But, but uh, you know, they're not uh, takers per se. You know, I mean, be, 
by the very nature of our job, we work with a lot of people. Some just come in and grab a few things in the office. Others like want everything. My kids are more the selective type, yeah, I would cool. say. Yeah. The nice type. My, my yeah. older kid, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> everyone's, yeah. Well, yeah. my older kid, though, uh, <laughs> definitely likes Boost product. And so, like, yeah. we'll only wear Boost or Bounce product. So, comfort, though. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, not culture. If, if, we, <laughs> if we were to, to do this event in 10 years' time, do you think there'd be shoes different to what they're on now? Do you, do you think you'd have a 4D in there? In 10 years' time? If yeah, you did like, in 10 like years' time or 20 years' time. Loop. Yeah, the future car would, yeah. would that be? Well, I, I mean, would, I'd assume that would future, definitely future be Future classics. There. Oh, oh, without question. I mean, yeah. the 4D is going to revolutionize sneaker production. Mm. I mean, as a whole. I, my brother and I talk, have talked about this before, but like, I'm convinced my kids' kids are going are gonna to say things like, you mean you st- to wear the same sneaker as someone else? Because they're just going to hit the print button at their house, you know? So it's like they'll scan their, they'll have a scan, they'll go, it'll be like any other technology yeah. advancement at that point. So, um, so, and I think 4D is really the entry point to that, uh, Futurecraft 4D. And then, um, you know, obviously the, there would be like every easy would be a part of that. The human race product would be a part of that. Um, yeah. NMD would be a part of that. Uh, Ultra Boost would be a part of that. I mean, the, the, I would say that if you looked at our catalog over the last four years, there's definitely a couple of those that would have risen to that moment in 20 years' time. I think that you got to give it till then, though, to kind of go back. It Otherwise, like you're just kind of restocking. It sounds like a dangerous position for a brand to be in in the future because like when the internet came about and you could download music for free, mm-hmm. it changed the music industry. Yeah. So when you can print shoes at home, what does that mean for for Adidas, who can who manufacture them now? Well, we'll be we will. I, smarter people than me will have figured it out <laughs> for the brand by the time that happens. You see what I mean, right? Where, where does that? Oh, uh, I mean, it's where, all that's technology. That's a good point. What you said. All, yeah. All technology can. I mean, for sure. It's driverless cars. Mm. No, all of it. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. world's going to change. I mean, your your every cell in your body changes every seven mm. years. Mm. So you are not even the same human being you were seven years ago physically. Mm. It's just it's kind of deep, man. That's, that's yeah. kind of deep. Ways, change, man. man. But no, just that it. point of, change is the only change, constant. Bro. of imagining change. being able to print your own shoe at home. And I was thinking, like, if Adidas had that technology for people to print at home, would they put a limit on how many Yeezys you can print? So, hey, maybe so that's, no, there's no more Yeezys. You can't print them today. But maybe that's an initiative, know. though. Maybe good, maybe good maybe that's like a subscription that you sign up to. Like, yeah. say you pay, I don't know, three hundred. Uh, pounds a year yeah. and you are able to then download <laughs> your own pound print package well, no, no, maybe yeah. download your own three shoes at home like mm. maybe that's the way around it because mm. we, we spoke about it before didn't we about how you could um, essentially we were talking about the, the loop because there was a, the whole system of you give the shoe back once you're done with it oh yeah and, and you, how you get something works. in return yeah. like how would that work would mm. it be a system of like say Adidas was to say cool you're going to have this shoe it's 250 pounds and then over the next year, you're allowed to bring that shoe back to us three times. Mm. And then you can have a brand new shoe three times, but after that, you're done. Like, mm. is, that, is that an initiative that you think could work within the sneaker industry? Yeah, this subscription. Maybe, maybe, it's a really interesting concept. I'd love to think about that more. Mm. I don't know. Maybe 250 know. is a little bit. I don't know, actually, when you think the average price of a shoe now is probably what? You know, I mean, from in dollars, it's probably about $110, right? It's going up, right? In that zone. Yeah, yeah in that zone. And your partners come to you with an idea before and if it's something that's like wow you'll go and see them um in the same sense the, the new partners come to you and be like i want to work with adidas i decided adidas is my brand because you know you said you select them as well that's, yeah that's the I, main how does it I work i think that that's the biggest change over the last like i'd say like five to six years is that we worked with some some partners who really shined a light on the brand and and it, and, it, and it helped other people to see what we were capable of. Well, so, so and they, they were like, to you? I want to work with that. And then that helped us to, to forge these relationships with people that have helped us to elevate our own thinking. You know, part of Adidas' core values is this idea of open source, which is hmm. where the ideas that we've already discussed come from. And, and to be honest, where a lot of these things were inspired from just by looking at market references during the eras that these were created in. And, um, you know, Run DMC is an open source Run DMC Superstar, that, that was the definition of open source. My Adidas, like shit, like that, mm. that was the inception of all brand collaborations, inception of sneaker culture, and the inception of open source. 
yeah. in a sense. And like for they, someone listening, Adidas that, crowdsourced that. In a, if you think about it, you know, open source to someone listening that's not sure what that means in the sneaker world. So for Adidas, open source means so different than like a Linux or whatever, yeah. or Linux. Um, Adidas, for for us, that means that we know we don't have all the answers, and and so we need to bring in creators from all facets of the of the community, whether it's the sustainability world with Parlay or um, you know looking back to 1986 with Run DMC and the, the superstar. It dates all the way. And, it, and it's, it's why it's such a, an authentic position for us to have as a brand because mm. we've always had this, you know, Adidas are handmade Muhammad Ali boxing boots when Muhammad Ali was the most controversial figure in the world. So mad when you say that. Transcendental has impact. figure. And then Bob Marley was a person we welcomed to the brand who was mm. also a very, like, political guy in Jamaica with bringing people together and you know so I always thought of Adidas as this open source brand with this inclusive mindset um, but but yeah the open source thing means that we don't know everything and therefore we need to bring in people who can help us find solutions for questions that we might not even know exist yet Yeah, and they've predicted or anticipated and so by merging our you know, creative thinkers at the brand, which I'm not one of, but there are people there that, that I, you know, if they tell me that's what's happening, yeah. I trust it implicitly because the expertise. So this is team. like technology partners as well, right? Some like tech, Bali, some like, art, some design. Like Continental, you, for instance. or Right. Yeah. And yeah. what about when influencers? Is it the same principle where Sorry? influencers can approach you guys as well? So celebrity who wants to work with Adidas, and they come to you and they say, we want to work with you guys. And then you make them an offer like that if they're right. So I would say the, for, for us, I, I'm more couching in the thinking of like, we want to work with people who want to work with us. Yeah. So, so it can work both ways. We're not out there looking for like, oh, that person's hot. Let's mm. just like whatever kind of inauthentically like, so it's like if people are waving the flag at us mm. we're going to notice it you see them wearing Addy for instance yeah and then we're going to or they pick up the phone and call us we're going to notice it mm. but um, we're also like the teams on the ground I kind of didn't answer your question fully the teams that work for me the very first question you asked me sit in all those key cities and look at these influencers who are on the come Start up on that on. cusp yeah, and that yeah, can bring yeah. that creativity and new thinking into the brand um, that we can either support them on the ground locally through if they're a photographer, a digital technologist or Amazing. a painter yeah. or whatever, you know, maybe we'll get behind a gallery exhibition. And, yeah. and then um, actually this t-shirt is from a gallery exhibition by an artist named Eric Elms, who we partnered with at Heavyweight Art Gallery, who has a gallery for uh, uh, in Los Angeles off Fairfax and Spalding, mm. and then also has a gallery in Berlin as well. Nice. So, um, you know, by enabling those artists to kind of bring their their visions to life through our platform. Yeah, it's it's a win in every direction, mm. and um, so yeah, it could be. And then in the technology space with Parlay, or uh, other partners that you know, yeah. we're working on you know, like you mentioned, must so, be yeah. so interesting. You must learn it's what some makes things it so, with these oh, people. The, the, yeah. I mean, to be in the room with some of these prolific thinkers is yeah, is super inspiring. And you know, just to bring it all back into this room, like. Run DMC is the reason I love sneakers. And so to see Continental, or to see the Superstar 80 in here, and yeah. to see like, and to be able to like contact those guys now as an adult is like, I, my friends from high school, like, you know, they'll call me and be like, yo, what's going on? What's going on with Run DMC? They're not asking me about <laughs> more of the people that we work with right now who are maybe more um, in the media. Mm. They know that like, that was like what we were listening to in our cars then when we were driving around doing whatever it is teenagers do. So it's, um, it's just this amazing thing at Adidas to work at a brand that kind of like recognizes the, the spirit in that culture and not in, in the culture itself and not just in one dimension of yeah. the world. Yeah. What is it that you think... Does that make sense? You're like, yeah, 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 kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm like taking it in. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> like, am, am I, I going talking? too far on this? I don't want to... No. I'll, I'll, I'll reel it back. What yeah. is it that you think Adidas have to do next? Because obviously, you know, you guys are in a, a constant battle with Nike. You know, if that kind of number one spot, um, you know, it goes one way, it goes the other way. The pendulum swings so many times. But what do you think it is the, the next thing that you guys need to do that to just kind of like fully cement yourself as like that number one like sportswear brand in the world? Well, I, I think we're sitting in it right now. The whole idea of celebrating the, the iconics that, that literally were the 
the path that got you to this point in time today. So it's Homo Classics, right? So revisiting your, your history. Revisiting our history and then providing consumers with an immersive experience like the one we're standing in now, where they can create new memories with our band, brand as the backdrop for it. Um, you know, the products that we're creating for tomorrow have a very specific intent. The products in this room are more to say, we created this industry come celebrate that with us and form new memories against those products that got us here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so every scuff on every shoe every, every, that you'll get outside, whether you're playing uh, skateboarding or playing in the cage with, with cage football or, fuck, ping pong, I don't know. It's all out there. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, and like yeah. somebody could even step on your shoe and that's like, yo, that's a badge of honor in a sense. Like, I got that and you'll remember that moment in time mm. where that occurred. I think one of the themes I've very much picked up of the event space today is that yeah, there is basketball, there is football, yeah. there is, there's all these different kind of sports and, and areas to, to drift off into. It's almost like you're asking people to make memories right mm. here, right now and, and do what you're supposed to do with shoes, which is wear them. Mm. Absolutely, and I think we got to wear we very shoes. much got into an in, uh, like a culture of you know like our uh, rocket and uh, or stock it don't rocket kind of thing, and people have like double ups and triple ups, and I've been guilty of it myself, you know, like NMD uh, R1 OG that was you know it's one of my favorite Adidas shoes of all time. I I, I have a second pair that I'm ready to bust out in a few years' I think time. You've no, done that as well, right? You've got pairs probably at home. That I wear everything. You wear everything. Wear you have everything. to. Though. You what have about to. your favorite people, pairs that you have people, a second pair of? <laughs> I wear those too. You wear them too. You, yeah, I wear I wear my first. I, I mean, there's I I am not greedy with the shoes. Like mm. I try not to double up on anything because I don't want to, um, rob. You know, like the product. Take up all the space in your house because yeah, I don't want to rob wife, someone. The of wife, your wife will be after you, right? Let's no, be honest. No, no, no. She she gave me that closet for Valentine's Day, uh, February 2016. Steph, if you're listening, yeah, that's what I want next year, she, 2020. She, yeah, she did, she did, and um, and that was the first picture I posted that went what yeah, you're talking that was about. It. Uh, but you, you, yeah, you, the, can, you, you can take a lot of pride in it. It went viral. It, it sent Instagram into a frenzy. Don't worry. The, uh, it's, he plays this down so yeah, much. Yeah, He's exactly. like, no, yeah, that, it's, oh, uh, that's the one you're talking about. Uh, you, you can, no, you can I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's just weird to talk about it I as know. the guy who's putting the picks up yeah. because I'm just a dude putting picks up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, like, I'm proud of that work, man. The energy and effort that went into all that stuff and the, the ride that we've been on the last few years, yeah. five years, I mean, it's been meteoric. And, and meanwhile, we have so much further to go. We know we're nowhere that we want to be. Like this is, we, we want to be way, way past here. So, um, you know, what better way to do that than combine like the energy that you bring to the market. Um, how, how close are you to fulfilling the, the kind of promise that Kanye wanted in terms of everybody being able to have the shoe? How, how close do you think you are to that? Because a million pairs of the Cream 350 V2, like that's... That's huge numbers that was released, right? We, I don't know that we ever quoted the quantity on how many of those shoes were Oh, right. maybe, maybe that's just maybe me playing off the Twitter sphere. I'm not yeah. 100% sure on if we ever quoted that. Yeah. Um, I like however, that answer. That's a good however, answer. Um, <laughs> Media trained. <laughs> what I was saying <laughs> is that uh, that, was the, that was the reason that shoe was made, was to deliver on that promise. Mm. And... Um, you know, there there will be shoes that are that are made in a more scarcity based business model, and then there will be others where it's for people. You know, it's like what you were saying earlier. You got to wear your shoes. Yeah, we're not making shoes to not make shoes. This we're making it. shoes to make shoes. But at the same time, um, you know, you the way to create that future classic is to kind of gently balance on that tightrope of when you deliver on the quantity versus when you have people come back for more. And, you know, after we did that, there was definitely a lot of people in the atmosphere, Twitter sphere, internet, who had a lot to say about us and him. And then two nights ago, I didn't hear any of that. I mean, so, the, know, beauty, the beauty of the internet is everybody has a lot to say now mm. because we've given everybody a platform to have an opinion on something that they don't really Here have the right to have an opinion on, right? <laughs> I feel you. I need no, to, uh, that's, yeah, for sure. I need to ask you, how do people do what you've done in the industry? Because there's going to be a lot of younger people out there that want to sort of follow a same similar path. How did you? I wouldn't what recommend mindset it. Does I, it take? I, honestly, man, it's, <laughs> been, it's, it's been not um, worth it. I man. mean, unless you love, what does it take? unless you love being told no and rejection, mm. it's. It, I'm just. I'm obviously kidding around, but I'm not. Like the reality is, is that if you um, firmly believe in your heart in something, 
that is going to bring, you know, and, and it's like what we were talking about with change earlier. Like people are just naturally averse to change. So when you come in with an idea and you want to fight for it and you face rejection, that's kind of the, the path of innovation and the path of like pioneering something and believing, you know, mm. doing something new and different. And so you just kind of have to either be the dumbest person on earth, the most arrogant person on earth, mm. or the most, you know, persevere harder than anyone ever. And, that's and I'm sure at certain times throughout my life, I've been all three of those people. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and, and I, I'm hoping that I've come out the other side of that. But for real, like it was, um, I just identified a, a problem that I thought existed. I presented it in a way that um, people received it well. And then uh, that became my job. It wasn't like I was like, hey, I want to do this thing in entertainment and influencer marketing. And to be honest, the reason our department is called that is because that was the cover page of the deck I created. Yeah, the problem. Not because we were wanting to call Aiming a team to that. that. Yeah, yeah. 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 This problem, though, that you just said was like the problem of working with partners, uh, better partners. It was more how to work from end to end with yeah. uh, celebrities and influencers, not uh, from, a, from a launch perspective, not necessarily, uh, or so that you could do everything from campaign to product to activations. Yeah. So you to, actually to, carved to, that out, that position. What? Well, I guess in a sense, yeah. That's I mean, my cool. boss. I, I told my boss, I was like, "Hey, there's this issue with this, that, the other." Yeah. She uh, agreed with me and said, "Why don't you put a plan together for that?" And then that became the job. But it yeah. wasn't like I was like, "Hey, there's this job that I think exists out because it kind of mm. is made up in a sense." So but how long have you been doing this position now? Uh, nine years. Wow. Well, okay. So you, you like you yeah. said, you were really pioneering, really that type of thing, yeah. especially when that word influencer was not what it is now. Right. The word influencer has changed in definition. And it, but it, absolutely yeah. between yeah, then yeah, and yeah, now. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Um, Cause then it was like people who like, I mean, now it's also like an influencer is a social media based thing, but then it was like an influencer was actually influential in mm. their community. Mm. And I, and that's like my Kanye reference is like, people are always like saying, you know, influencers live on social media. I'm like, well, Kanye doesn't have an Instagram. He's the most influential guy on the planet. Yeah. So like, there's many actually real, real examples of influential people who aren't on social media, who, who drive culture. Mm. Um, but that is not what that word means. I hear you. Uh, but yeah, we were, we were just out trying to help the brand deliver its message in a more meaningful way. And, yeah. and the reality is, is that influencers, I know that people have a certain stigma around that word now, but influencers in the traditional sense and in the sense that they are today, help you stitch together a message on a local level that as a global brand, when you're trying to have consistent storytelling, is difficult given like local nuance, language, translation, customs, etc. So hmm. having people in a local market who can help you tell your story in an authentic way to their, you know, immediate community is uh, is very beneficial to a brand. Right, yeah. because I've got two questions for you very quickly because I'm quite conscious of time. Two minutes. One that you're probably not going to want to answer, but okay. if I don't ask it, I can tell that everybody in the comments is going to really get onto me. Okay. Talk to me about your thoughts on the resale market on some of the Adidas products. Like, for example, Yeezy. What are your thoughts? Um, I mean, resale is just part of the game. You know, what, $2 billion industry? I, that's the stat. I, I don't, I don't, I think it is, right? Yeah, it's that's like right. Two, um, yeah. But, you know, the reseller community, yeah, I, I don't know if I really have an opinion on it. It's, it's sort of one of those questions that's unanswerable because... It is what it is. So you don't um, not support it. You don't support it. It's just you're just impartial. I, our team works with celebrities and influencers on seeding products and making sure that we are are finding the right messengers for those products. And um, but the resale thing, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, God, it's I like knew I, this is going to be the kind of answer consu- I was going to get. It, uh, no, fine. honestly, that's like fine. it's a consumer that's experience that I do not love. That's but fine. It's not. I'm not in it, so. I would have got a lot of hate if I didn't ask the question. Hit, hit one more. How do you feel about it? One. Okay, my <laughs> lot. <laughs> I'm out. I could talk about it all day long. Okay. Um, my last question would be: What are three classics for you from Adidas? From the, your entire time of working with Adidas and, and the archive and stuff that means stuff to you, what would be your top three? Uh, shit. Yeah, man. Sorry. <laughs> it's tough, man. I was going to ask what's your favorite sneaker. To be fair, I but that say, wasn't my last question. I would about say, earlier. yeah. You know, I'd have to say superstar just because if you don't, like, you're, you're, you're right? literally 
out of your mind. Um, Superstar Stan Smith, and then I'd have to. Can I do four? Yeah, yeah. Go on, I'll let you do four. So I'll do Superstar Stan Smith, uh, the Turtle Dove 350, and Ooh. the first Human Race uh, NMD we did with Pharrell. Yeah. Cool. Actually, I'd do five, and I'd do Ultra Boost. Yeah. Amazing. The one. That yeah. is yeah, Wex's human, top five classics. Yeah, the yeah. human race is a great choice as but well. The, but yeah. the first Adidas shoe I ever got was a, a Burgundy Campus because I remember it like dyed my big socks. Big shoe Campus, man. Big yeah, shoe. yeah. I'm it was like fan. you know I begged my parents to buy for me, and so you know, I I love the Homa Classics because it it just brings out so many memories of like. I mean, the Nizza High, we didn't talk about that. Like, you know what I mean? It's like there's so much good shit in there. That, so like, I've, one thing I've always said is, in my personal opinion, Nike do the best marketing for product, but there's no one that tells a story like Adidas. I've said that before, and I'll, I'll stand by it. Every single Adidas event I've been to, every time I've, I've been asked to go out to something, there's never been a brand to tell a better story, in my opinion. We appreciate the love, man. Mm. That's awesome. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you very yeah. much for joining us. Thanks for All joining cool. us. Yeah, anytime. Let me know. Do you have, any, do you have any, any, any last message for our our, our strong clan of viewers? The sole supplier crew? Yeah, yeah man. man. Uh, just, we love you. Yeah. Thank you for supporting Adidas. And, uh, you know, well, it's, it's a blessing to work in this industry. So thank you for supporting me and my family. <laughs> and no, but in all seriousness, like we pay attention to everything you guys are saying and uh, for better or worse. So... And yeah. finally, what would you recommend to the people out there that want to get into the industry and do your job? Just get your foot in the door. Getting Any your job. foot in the door is the hardest part. Once you get your foot in the door, your work ethic, your performance, your, your ability to communicate, your ability to share your ideas, your ability to get your ideas out of your head and show people and how to like create a movement through that, uh, informal leadership, things of that nature, mm. all that will come out. And if you get your foot in the door, you can accomplish great things. It took me three years to get my foot in the door at Adidas. Three years. Banging on the front door long every time. week. Got every decline. That was when you would apply for a job and they'd send you a letter in the mail and tell you you got, didn't get the job. That's nice. Uh, to let you know you didn't get it. Now you don't even you get got, a reply. Not if you got three years of uh, yeah. uh, you're not the right guy. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's definitely like one of those things, you know, going back to your question about mm. what it takes. You just have to, like, there's some moments that are literally soul crushing. Mm. And you just have to wake up the next day and get up, fight it for it's another that thing day. thing about you know? resilience, right? Yeah. You can't yeah. climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pockets. Yeah, Look I at love this it. guy. Yeah. Shout out on the force nigger on that one. Right? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. But no, it's, it's always nice. about letting people know what they can do because we're in nice positions and we have to help. Oh, no, I feel blessed, man. You know, and like, yeah. I think that people see, you know, you're saying Instagram, whatever, people mm. fake curating their lives. You're seeing a lot of people on social media now doing the live stream thing because it's a true depiction of who they really are. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, vulnerability people are sharing, you know, it's, that's the future. But uh, Love that. yeah, man. Thanks, Wes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I've been Alex Vass. I've been You've George. Been George from the Soul Supplier. And of course. Hey, John Wexler. Thank you very much. Peace.